you need a way out You've been trapped in that trial Full of sorrow and doubt yeah. You saw a trickle of sunlight But you found no escape Just hold on to his promises said that he If you have your Bibles, let's all stand in the reading of the Word of God and we'll build our foundation in Psalms 34. Psalms 34 in the Old Testament. And we'll start with verse 1. Psalms 34. Say amen when you found it. Amen. Verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. What did he say? He said, I will bless the Lord sometimes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. Verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you. Lord, anoint me to bring forth thy word and rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, we pray, glory to God, that we come together in one mind, in one accord, love and unity, Lord. Get our mind focused. Don't let our mind wander off. And glory to God, don't know what the preacher preach or what verse he came from. Lord, help us to keep our focus and not let, let our mind wander, but be strong and mighty in you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church says... Amen. You may be seated if you can. He said in verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It ain't a family that's not been shaken by troubles, turmoils, sickness, finances, whatever it might be. Every household is being shaken. Amen. Go to God. And I'm just not touched. Amen. Saying shaken just a little. I'm saying shaken to the core. The amen. If I put a title on the message this morning, it would be the healing power of afflictions. Ooh, it quiet. The healing power of afflictions that falls across your path and mine. As painful. As afflictions are, God uses to achieve His purpose in our lives. Scripture makes it clear that God can use afflictions to heal a man, the saints, as well as sinners. Hello. You said saints and sinners, yeah. I think of Manasseh, the wickedest king in Israel's history. Manasseh turned from the Lord and became a vile and murderous man. Consider all the evil this man did. He raised idols to the pagan god Baal, even in the courts of the temple. He built altars of worship, the sun, the moon, and stars. He sacrificed his own children, casting them into fiery park, amen, fiery pits of demonic bell idols. Amen. He condoned witchcraft and familiar spirits and devil worship. He was a brute, bloodthirsty tyrant who delighted in murdering innocents. Scripture says Manasseh sinned worse than all the heathens surrounding Israel. What happened to this wicked king? God sent great afflictions upon Manasseh through the Assyrian army. The dread of the Assyrians invaded Jerusalem and took the people captive, including Manasseh. Binding him in chains, wrapping his body in painful thorns. They forced the Israelites into a day, man, daily long marches, giving them little to eat or drink. It was during this time, the awful affliction, that Manasseh began to pray. 
2 Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and verse 12, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Verse 13, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. He learned through his affliction how evil and wicked this man was. God dealt with him through afflictions. How was this man restored? It happened through afflictions. The Lord raised up the Assyrians, using them as his rod of correction. Amen. Manasseh's kingship was restored. Isn't that amazing? How wicked and vile this king once walked with God, but God dealt with that man. Even sinners, God can bring them in through their afflictions. Did you hear me? Give the Lord a great, ain't God good? Thank God for his mercy and his grace. We can look at the New Testament. Paul, he thought he was doing God's work. Amen was Saul at the time. And amen, he had papers. He's going to haul everybody into the arenas, into the jailhouses. But thank God, but thank God, God met him on the road of Damascus. Enough is enough. Glory to God. I knocked him off his high horse, blinded him three days, and filled him with the Holy Ghost. Ain't that, ain't that amazing what God can do? Mm -mm -mm. If we just only we learn through our afflictions, it ain't to stay out of church. Now, I know you can't help when you're sick, you ain't able to come. So don't let that little devil sit on your shoulder. Hello. I'm talking about coming when you don't feel like it. We don't go by feelings. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. That God would move in this last of the last days. I feel like we are in the last hours of this race. It ain't a time to slow down. But it's a time to press on in the name of Jesus. You said I'm tired of pressing. Amen. Let God be your strength, your shield, your buckle, your high tower. Let him be the lily of your valley and the bright in the morning star. You got to press on. Y'all gonna be quiet on me this morning. You're gonna help me preach. Say amen, oh me one. Learn through the afflictions that we face in this life. It ain't a time to slow down, but it's a time to press on. It's a time you said, I don't understand. Quit trying to sit there and figure out why me, Lord, why this? Why did this happen? But hold on, amen, to the anchor of your soul. Amen, the winds of adversity might flow. All hell might rise against you. But go to God, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If Jesus ain't in your soul, it ain't nothing that the devil can do but blow and blow in the smoke of the battle is cleared away you still standing in victory did you hear me come on church give the Lord a great big hand we can never give up on anyone even the most vile and evil person God's ways of bringing even the wickedest of sinners to himself through afflictions. The psalmist David, he said in Psalms 119, verse 67, 
Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Ooh-wee. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn that statue. I dig in the word and hold on as the best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, no ears heard, no has it entered to the heart of men that God has got prepared for them that love him. And God good, church. And God good. You said, I'm going through hell. I hold on. The best is yet to come. I can stand up here and tell you all the afflictions that me and my family has been through. You can stand up and say all the afflictions you and your family has been through. But glory to God, we're still standing. We're still standing by the help and the grace of God. It ain't a time to look back. It ain't nothing but hell itself. Look forward, glory to God. He might knock you down. You might cry out through the night and you can't sleep. But joy, but joy, but joy shall come in the morning. Church, hold on, hold on. Learn through our afflictions and our troubles and our trials and our times. While it was, he said, while I was in pain, he opened his word to me and I began to see clearly. Yeah. Psalm 66 and verse 10, for thou, O God, have proved us, thou have tried us as silver, is tried. Verse 11. Thou brought us us into the net. Thou layest afflictions upon our lawns. Verse 12. And thou hast caused men to ride over our head. We went through the fire. Went through fire and through water. But thou brought us us out into a wealthy place. Woo! Church. Give the Lord a great big hand. We're living in times of troubles and there's trials, not only in our own household, amen, but we see the world turned upside down. Amen. You see people, amen, in foreign countries are protesting, seeing China, amen, locked down again because of COVID. People are rising up. Amen. Glory to God. Enough is enough. Amen, church. We getting ready to get out of here. It ain't a time to slack up. It ain't a time to stop. Come to church every chance you get. Amen. Get into the Word of God every day. Get into your prayer closet every day. Did you hear me? On my phone, I got to delete it off because uh, a news flash, a news, breaking news. Amen. Five killed, six killed, one killed, seven killed. Amen. Walmart and amen. Atlanta, Georgia, one killed and several wounded in a shopping mall. Amen. Go to God. You say, why? Because you know what? Amen. I don't need to know what the devil's doing because I know what he's doing. Amen. Had a news flash in Roanoke. Amen. Go to God. Where the people go by and knock you out and leave you laying on the street like they did in New York. They got people going around busting people in the head and walk off. Not Knowing for no reason whatsoever, Amen. Go to God. You said, "Church, you said, preacher, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna hold on to Jesus. I the bear. It ain't a time to slack up. It's a time to get on fire, on fire for God. You got to wake up. We got to wake up. These lamentations." Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 32 and 33. Now though, now though he causes grief, yet will we have compassion according to the multitudes of his mercies. Verse 33, for he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. 
In other words, he's saying God has no pleasure in afflicting anyone, saint or sinner. Jeremiah is telling us God may chast chasten us. It is grievous to us, but he doesn't bring suffering willingly. He does it with pain of heart. In the Hebrew meaning, literally, his heart is not in it. His heart is not to chasten, but to in, but in the healing that it brings. He don't like, like a lot of us with our children, and we tell our children, this is going to hurt me worse. It's going to hurt you. At the time, I thought my mom and daddy would lie. Because it sure did hurt. Did you hear me? But as you get older, you realize what they're saying. God loves us. If he sees veering off of the wrong way, Lord, let the chest, let the Lord, Lord whoop us till we wake up. Did you hear me? Psalms 145 and verse 8, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger of great mercy. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are all over his works. No, no matter what we're going through, God's mercy is there for us. His mercy is over all of his work and all of his people. Hold on. Don't give up. Hold on. The devil's a liar, but God is the truth. God is going to see us through all of our difficult pains and our troubles in life. Learning through our afflictions. Amen. Say, Lord, a lot of times we blame the devil. We blame this one. We'll blame that one. I left the church, didn't get a thing out of it. Well, it wasn't the preacher's fault. You shouldn't have been sleeping. So I didn't get a thing out of the service. You shouldn't have been passing notes and talking. Amen. We blame it on the preacher. We blame it on the deacons. We blame it on the Sunday school teachers. We blame it on the, amen, the evangelists. Amen. Really, if we didn't get nothing out of it, it all boils down to you and me. Amen. Who has an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God has got to say. I'm here to tell you through the afflictions that we're going through in this life. Do not let Jesus go. It ain't a time for you to leave and say, amen, live like a hermit at the house. Amen, ain't no use me going, ain't no use me serving the Lord. Everything's come against me. Everything my hand touches, it fails. But I'm here to tell you, amen, if you just stand up and say, God, here I am. If it's anything, amen, unlike you and me, let the Holy Ghost burn it out of me. Let the Holy Ghost Ghost burn it out of me. Did you hear me? Come on, honey, get a song ready. Give you what God's given me this morning. Learn through our afflictions and our troubles and our heartaches and our hardships. Amen. It ain't the end of life. I know a lot of times death of a loved one, child, whatever it may be, it's horrible. Amen. But we got to hold on. Got to hold on. I don't know about you, but I don't want to die and burn in hell for eternity. Don't want to. Jesus said it's a place of wailing and gnashing of teeth. A place of darkness, screaming and hollering. Have mercy, have mercy, and praying. But judgment has been passed. Hmm. Second Corinthians 4 and 17, chapter 4 and 17. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight 
of glory. Ain't God good? Oh my goodness. Don't allow the enemy to steal and rob from you. With love and compassion this morning. A lot of preachers have quit preaching about hell. Went to a funeral, not mention not one thing about hell. No invitation. I'm sorry, Sister Diane, I'm just old school. I can't help it. I wasn't raised in church, but I thank God I had a preacher tell me, did you hear me? There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. If you're here this morning and you lost and undone, Jesus paid the ultimate price that we don't have to go to that place. For you and me to have life and have it more abundantly. You don't have to go there. If you go there, you had chose to go there. God don't send you. We send ourselves. By being disobedient, sin, and let sin come in and run rampant in our lives. Amen. When was the last time you felt the presence of God so great that you got out of your seat and started dancing in the Holy Ghost? When's the last time that you felt, amen, the urge just to praise Him and raise your hand to Him? Hmm. Learning through our afflictions and our troubles and our heartaches, the best is yet to come. Hold on. Hold on. When Jesus preached on hell more than he did about heaven to warn you and me not to go there, he said they bound up the wheat and they bound up the tares. Tares represents the wicked and they're cast into hell. I mean, into the fire. He's talking about hell. Sheep's on the right and the goats on the left. You say, how I know I'm not a goat? If you eat everything, you're a goat. I'm talking about every denomination, everything. Oh, I believe this, I believe that. Amen. Believe the right thing. Amen. Stick with the King James. Old fashioned. At least you know how I stand. Amen. I ain't got four or five Bibles up there reading from you. You don't know which book I'm out of. Amen. I stick to the truth. With love and compassion this morning, there's a heaven again and a hell to shun. No matter what we're going through in this life, hold on to Jesus. The best is yet to come. Let's all stand. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And no one looking around, please. In hell, there's no vacation. There's no time out. There's no relief. You be eternally separated from your family. And most of all, you be separated from Jesus. Take